Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 92. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will proclaim, The Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. You, O Lord, are exalted forever. Let's bow in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you are upright. The righteous flourish. We live in your temple. We abide in your presence. Blessed is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Guide us, O Lord. Guide us by your grace to your glory. Forgive our sins through your love. Hear our prayers. We offer this and all our prayers in the living name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
The scripture reading is taken from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. In those days, when the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under the direction of Eli, there were very few messages from the Lord, and visions from him were quite rare. One night, Eli, who was now almost blind, was sleeping in his own room. Samuel was sleeping in the sanctuary where the sacred covenant box was. Before dawn, while the lamp was still burning, the Lord called Samuel. He answered, Yes, sir, and ran to Eli and said, You called me, and here I am. But Eli answered, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord called Samuel again. The boy did not know that it was the Lord, because the Lord had never spoken to him before. So he got up, went to Eli, and said, you called me, and here I am. But Eli answered, My son, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. The Lord called Samuel a third time. He got up, went to Eli, and said, You called me, and here I am. Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to him, Go back to bed, and if he calls you again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord came and stood there and called as he had before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, your servant is listening. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. As we think about the scripture reading read to us today, the call of Samuel. Let's bow in prayer for a moment. Blessed Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of your word. We give you thanks for the presence of your wisdom. We give you thanks that you call us in our own particular, unique, special ways. Hear our prayers which we offer in the name of the one who is the word made flesh, the wisdom from on high, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ. Amen. The call of Samuel begins by telling us what the world was like, what Samuel's world was like, what Israel was like in those days. We are told two things. The word of God was rare in those days and there were very few visions. We think about our own lives. We think about our own travels, our own journeys, our own challenges. And in this rapidly aging new year, we ask ourselves, is the word of God still rare in our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our nation, in our world? Our visions of a better and brighter and more beautiful future still rare for every single one of us. This was the context of Samuel. This may be your life as well. My life as well. This may be Trinidad and Tobago today. The word of God is still very rare. And there are very few visions. Into this world we are told. The lamp of God. The light of God. It is still burning. It is still flickering. It hadn't yet gone out. It was night time in the temple. The lamp of God was the literal lamp. They lit it. You let it burn and you fell asleep. The wick of the lamp would burn out and there would be darkness. Metaphorically, of course, allegorically, symbolically, it means the lamp of God was still alive. The light of God had not yet been extinguished and would not be extinguished because the people of God were there waiting for that light and without even knowing it, listening out for that voice. In our lives, the lamp of God is still there, the light of God, even though it may be flickering, it is there, it is bright. It is calling us. It radiates 
light around us and light for us. And it gives us light inside. Samuel hears a voice. Samuel hears a voice. Voice calls out to him by name. Samuel answers. Here I am. He runs to the only other person there, Eli. Now this happens a couple of times. After the third time, Eli realizes this is the voice of God calling Samuel. Now Eli has not heard the voice. Why? Was the voice only within Samuel's soul and mind and heart? Was the voice echoing throughout the temple, but Eli could not hear it? We do not know, but Eli did not hear it, but even without hearing it, he could explain it. In our lives, some of us are called to be Samuel, hearing a voice but not knowing what to do. Whose voice is it? How to answer? Where to go from here? We run to the wrong people. But even the wrong people can have the right answers. Eli has not heard the voice, but he has the explanation. And he tells Samuel, go back. When you hear that call, you say, here I am, Lord. Speak, your servant is listening. Samuel does that. We think about our lives. We think about how we can teach, how we can lead, how we can inspire, how we can instruct someone who has different talents from us. They hear a voice that we do not hear. They have a calling that we do not have. They have a mission that is not our mission. It's their mission. They may be hearing a call from the future and for the future. By the faith that God gives us, we are told. Don't be intimidated by that. Don't be embarrassed by it. Don't be ashamed of it. Teach them. Teach them how to reply. Teach them what to do. Teach them how to listen. Teach them how to respond to the call of God in their lives. How to recognize the living call of God in their daily existence. In the quiet of the night time, how to recognize this is the voice of God speaking through the stillness. In the darkness of the temple courts, the Lord of the temple is speaking. To Samuel, not to Eli. If we are Eli, let us help those who are Samuel around us. If we are Samuel, let us look around us for those who are the Eli in our existence, those we can ask. What's going on? What should I do? I'm hearing something. I'm listening, but I do not know how to reply. The Lord calls us. By the grace of God, by the blessing of God, let us recognize whoever we are, however old or young we are. We are called to answer or to teach someone how to answer. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
O oh Lord, we go into your will. Bless us, we pray. Speak, Lord, for all of your servants are listening. And we go forth into your world, listening and loving, remembering and rejoicing that the blessing and the power and the peace and the presence of our one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, will rest and remain and abide upon each one of us and on all those we love wherever they may be, now and forever. 